Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to be doing the New Year Booktuber tag. This was a tag created by Jessen over at Jessen Reads Romance and I think she created some great questions for this tag. So I'm going to mention her in the comments below, check out her channel, check out her video. She is amazing. And then I was tagged to do this by McKay over at Oh Hey It's McKay and she did an amazing video as well and I love her channel too so be sure to go check out her videos. So Jessen created this tag just asking some questions about your plans for this year 2023 and I can't wait to talk about them. So the first question she has is what are you most excited for for 2023? I don't have like a major thing. I'm very excited for obviously Book Bonanza in June because I'm going to that and I'm going to be seeing some of my bookish friends again and then for the first time. So that's really exciting. I think one of the main things I'm excited for is just to adult. If that makes sense. I graduated college uh, in December and so I don't know what I want to do with the rest of my life. So I'm kind of excited but also really scared. I don't know what I'm gonna do. We'll we'll see what happens in 2023. The next question is do you have a Goodreads challenge goal and why that number specifically? Yes, I do. I do use Goodreads. I love Goodreads and then I do compete, not compete. I challenge myself to do the Goodreads challenge every year. The past like three years in a row I've done 200 books and I really want to stick with that number even though in 2022, I read over 300. I just want to stick to 200. I never know what's going to happen with life if I'll get sick again and I get a job that brings me away from reading. So I just want to keep it at 200, even though I know that I can go way over that. Next, we have a list three five star predictions. Books that I picked, one of them is a new release. Um, I talk about it in my 2023 most anticipated releases. Um, this one is, sorry, I forget the title of it, Fractured Souls by Neva Altaj. This is her sixth book in the Perfectly Imperfect series. I love Neva's books. Her Perfectly Imperfect series is absolutely fantastic and I think she is a new all-time favorite author for me so I am going to be looking forward to anything that she publishes. And then two other ones are like backlist titles. However, I really plan on reading them in 2023. One is Flawless by Elsie Silver. I'm actually going to be buddy reading this with my lovely friend Zay over at Witty Reads in January. I've been hearing nothing but good things about Elsie Silver and this book specifically and then also the sequel and so I think it's gonna be five stars. I believe this one is like a cowboy romance or a bull rider sorry bull rider romance and then his kind of like PR babysitter um because he's not doing some very stand-up things for his sponsorships and stuff so I've heard amazing things about this book so I think it's gonna be five stars but I don't want to I don't want to set my expectations high and then the third five star production that I have for next year is this one. <laughs> I have not read this book yet. I know this is See Everyone by Pam Godwin. Everyone and their mother has read this book <laughs> except for me. I don't know why I keep putting it off. I think I put off books that I think I'm gonna love. I don't know why I do. I, I just do it. <laughs> so this is one of those books. It's kind of a chunker. I do have the audio. I got it on the Audible sale earlier in uh, 2022. There was that huge Audible sale. I got this during that, the audiobook during it. And I've heard amazing things about this and um I hope, I hope it's five stars. If you didn't know, this is a historical pirate romance. I, I'm so here for it. Question number four is what genre, subgenre, or trope do you want to read more of? Uh, I put two on here. I specifically want to read more fantasy romances because I love fantasy romance. Here's my whole shelf here. I love fantasy romances. I want to read the ones I haven't read that are on this shelf, but then also just prioritize other fantasy romances and do more research about it because I've read the pretty popular ones, but I kind of, I want to find hidden gems that no one has talked about, no one has found yet. Like I really want to dedicate some time next year to doing that because I love the fantasy romance genre so much and I just, I need more favorites in my life. I also really want to read more historicals. I've seen some of my friends who have done this tag talk about how they didn't read as much as many historicals in 2022 as they would have liked. The same goes for me. I want to read more. I have a bunch right next to me like shelves upon shelves of historicals that I definitely want to get more into and I kind of want to read like staple authors that I've never read before or only read one or two books from like um I've only read one Kerrigan Byrne I really want to read more Elizabeth Hoyt and I've never read a Johanna Lindsay so I kind of want to read some like staple historical authors that I haven't really dipped my toe deep into you know question number five is uh what trope do you think will be the most popular in 2023 i obviously don't know but um <laughs> i think it'll probably be like the ones that are typically staples like enemies to lovers 
you know, like enemy slivers is always the big, the big one in mafia and stuff. But one that I hope will get more traction in 2023 is friends slivers because I love friends slivers. It is so underhyped and so underappreciated. If people say that they don't like friends slivers, they're not reading the right kind of friends slivers. They haven't found their friends slivers book. I really want that to gain traction in 2023 because friends slivers is like everything to me so I want more people to definitely read that trope. Question number six is name three bookish goals and I also combined this with like book two book content goals in my brain um because I don't really have a lot of bookish goals other than meeting my Goodreads challenge which isn't really a goal of mine it's just like a parameter I've set for myself um but it's definitely not a goal like I won't kick myself in the butt if I don't read 200 books this year. I don't really care about that. One thing with reading is I really want to read more from my shelves and prioritize. I think I talked about this last year in my last year reading goals, uh, physically reading books. I love my audiobooks. I love them, but I definitely have books on my shelves that I think I will love and even my historicals that I think I will love, but there's no audio, but I think I'm going to love it. So like, I just need to get back into the groove of reading physically, even though I sometimes don't feel like it. My brain goes a million miles a minute. I am constantly thinking about everything I constantly need to do. And so it's really hard for me to sit down and physically read a book. Like that's something I don't really do. Like audiobooks are constantly going while I'm doing like other things. And so um, I really want to dedicate some downtime you know, like maybe like 30 minutes before bed or an hour before bed or right when I wake up, like read a book physically. A like content bookish goal that I have is to comment at least one thing, hopefully on every single one of my booktube friends videos that I watch. I just love commenting on other people's videos. I love getting comments from people on my videos. It really, it like brightens my day. It puts a big smile on my face. Even if someone just leaves me one of those emojis that I tell you to leave at the end of the video, if you don't feel like commenting anything, like if I'm like, oh, if you don't feel like commenting anything, just leave me like a bear emoji or something. Like it puts a smile on my face just getting those. And so I uh, really want to dedicate my time to doing that for my friends. I love making people happy and I feel like leaving more comments and being as supportive as I could possibly be for my friends would just make me feel better and hopefully them as well. Another like content-ish goal that I have is to post consistently on my bookstagram. I know YouTube is, YouTube is also obviously there, but I already do that. I already have a very strict schedule for my YouTube. I don't think I've missed a video in a couple of years, if I'm not mistaken, or when I was sick, maybe I did, I don't remember, but I very rarely miss an upload for my YouTube. I post three videos a week on the same day, every day of the week, and I am already doing that. So I really wanna get into that groove when it comes to my Instagram, my bookstagram. Um, I'm already bringing up a catalog and making uh, Instagram content for 2023 right now. I'm currently filming this at the end of 2022. Um, I'm already trying to put together like a um group of photos that will be like backlogged for me like I already have like over 50 pictures taken that I'm going to be posting throughout the year and I just want to keep building on that and I want to plan out posts and write descriptions and plan them out in weeks in advance so they can just be ready to post and I don't have to stress or worry about it because I love the bookstagram community I love my friends on bookstagram and I just love the environment and how happy it makes me um I don't like regular Instagram in general like I have a personal one that I don't go on at all I even created a new personal one that's privated that only like 50 people I'm friends with on there um, because my regular like um, Instagram account that I had when I was in like high school literally puts me in a tail spin spiral of um, anxiety and depression like it's so bad and so it makes me so happy to be on bookstagram because that's the complete opposite of what my regular Instagram was. I really want to just dedicate more time and effort and love into that community so I want to take beautiful pictures, post beautiful pictures, talk to more people on there, just like really grow my Instagram. Question number seven is name three personal goals for this year. One that I have is to personally, I just want to work out more, get my body moving a little bit. 2022 was a little bit hard for me. Many of you know when it comes to my health and for the majority of the year, I was not able to move around or get around or even sit up out of bed. And so I really want to take control of my body again and make me feel like I'm in control of it. And I haven't had a blackout since April. And so I really want to take advantage of the health state, the remission state that I'm in, because um, I never know when I'm going to have a flare again. So I really want to take advantage for how I'm feeling now and just make my body feel better, you know? Whether that is just going on a walk around the neighborhood once a day or just like, 
I have this weighted hula hoop that I'm in love with, like doing that for 15 minutes a day. Like, I just want to get my body moving again. The next one is to just make some in-person friends. I don't really have any. I moved to Finn with my parents and their town is very small and it's filled with people from older generations than me. Um, and there's someone really my age in this town. And so I don't really know how I'm gonna make friends in person, but I really wanna do that. Um, I love all my online friends and my best friends from like high school um, and college, like they don't live anywhere close to me. And so I really want to make friends so I can like hang out with in person, you know? Um, we'll see if that happens because your girl has some really bad social anxiety, so. <laughs> and then the third one, I put this as a goal last year and it didn't happen, <laughs> but um, I went to go on at least one date. One, one date. <laughs> um, did not happen last year, has not happened. <laughs> has not happened since high school so um that's like a personal goal of mine i just want to want one at least one i don't do it and so i just i i i want i want a guy ask me out one time at least you know like i just want it <laughs> then the last question question number eight is what do you want to leave behind in 2023 i have like two answers for this one of them is personally and one that i have for the bookish community in general so personally like my shyness when it comes to my channel and then filming um I get really self-conscious around filming in front of other people, like my family, you know? And so um, I just wanna get more confident in that. And like, if they're in the house when I'm filming, like, that's okay, Avery, you've been doing this for almost six years. Like, you're good. You could film with other people in the house. It's okay, this is how you make your money. This is your job. Like, you need to get more comfortable with it. And if they listen in on you, like, it's not the end of the world. And then also my shyness when it comes to promoting my channel um like when I meet people in person sometimes like when I'm with my friends or somebody else or my family even like they ask what I do and what my hobbies are I'm like oh I love to read and then someone will say like oh yeah no she has a book channel like she talks about books and everything and I'm like no 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 it's fine don't mention it I talk about romance books it's not a big deal you don't have to follow me I don't want to talk about it. no I get very like clammy and closed up when people mention my booktube channel in real life and I don't know why I do that like I'm very proud of what I do and I dedicate a lot of time and effort into this channel and making my friends on here and just like this is one of my main passions in life and I need to stop like discounting that just because it's a romance channel and I'm afraid someone will judge me. So I definitely want to be more confident when it comes to filming and my channel. And then one in general <laughs> that I just wish the romance community or book community would like leave in 2023 in general is like the stigma and hate that the monster and alien romance readers get from other people like they think some people think like we're the scum of the earth for reading alien monster romances like excuse me like it's 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 fiction like it's fiction it's not real like <laughs> let us have our fun like we're fine uh you deal with you and I'll deal with me and I'll read what I want to read um like I just don't get why people hate on that it's just having some fun with some aliens and some monsters dude like what's wrong with that <laughs> they're not real <laughs> anyway um even though I wish they were real I'm not gonna lie so <laughs> anyway so that can definitely be left behind in 2023 or just like judging other readers in general I think I think McKay or somebody else talked about this in their video how like even dark romance readers get judged too for reading dark romance and I'm like can you just be you let people read what they want to read come on anyways there you have it that was the new year booktuber tag thank you so much jessen for creating this tag and mckay for tagging me i don't think i'm gonna be tagging anyone to do this uh you can do it if you want to you are tagged if you want to my only thing is i don't want to tag anyone specifically because i don't know when this video is going to be up and it might be already like past the new year and i don't want someone to feel pressured to post this if that does not mesh well with their content that they've already planned or something but if you would love to do this tag I am tagging you. Here you go. Let me know down below if you've read any of the books that I've talked about today or what your bookish goals are for 2023. I'd love to know or even some personal ones. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a star emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.